Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending with where you are watching us from. It is always a pleasure having you on board, and thank you so much for joining us this beautiful night. This is Kapo's Wheel Show, and this is where we write down our love wheel while we are alive, for we don't want our love story to be read when we are gone. Neither do we want our love story to be shared when we are not there. That is why... Here we always say that we want to show love to our spouses when we are here, living here, because in heaven there is no marriage. There it is worshipping and worshipping. So thank you so much, Karibuni Sana. My name is Willy Kinyash, and uh, out there they call me Undisputed. Now, Kipenda, Dr. Love. Thank you so much. And tonight I have an amazing guest who have come all the way from USA just to come and teach us how we can live happily in our marriages. And so I am hosting, I am honored to host Dr. Eunice Menja. She is a psychologist, lives in the US. Uh, she's married and she is a mother of two. So karibu sana, Daktari. Yes. Good. <laughs> good afternoon. Yeah. Good to have you here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You can say hi to our viewers and uh, you can tell us more about yourself. All right. Habari zenyu viewers. I am Eunice and I am very, very delighted to be here today. I, um, as I said, I am from Nyeri. I grew up in Nyeri. Those, you know that village where people never used to wear shoes when they were going to school? I'm one of those girls. Mm -hmm. So I'm humbled to be here today to talk about couples and to talk about anything couples and anything family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You you married? I am married. I have two children. Uh, both of them are grown girls now. They are adults. We call them adults because they are over 18. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We have been I, married for almost 25 years now. 25 years. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. yes. Wow. Nice. Mm -hmm. I understand that uh, you run a children's home. Yes, if you can tell us more about that. I do have a children's home that I started back in 2013. Um, before I went to the US, I used to teach Sunday school. And these little boys and girls that I love so much dearly, I worked with them. I was their Sunday school teacher. I was their drama teacher. <laughs> I wrote scripts, we went for festivals, PCA, we used to bring a lot of awards. So when it came for me to go to the US, I had to leave them. It was a very emotional time. We had a goodbye, actually a farewell party. It was, yeah, for us to say goodbye to each other with my core teachers. And during that time when I was leaving, there was a lot of things that were said. But the only thing that I remember vividly, or I remembered when I went to the US is when those kids told me, Teacher Eunice, when you go back, when you go to the U.S., don't forget us. Uh -huh. So when I went to the U.S., I looked for means to uh, stay connected with them. Uh, then I, after that, read that and I realized when I started receiving messages that some of my kids could not join high school because of school fees. Some of the kids that I used to teach did not even have a home. Uh, God touched my heart and I came back to start giving back to this community. So I started a children's home in 2013. Oh. And we have been taking care of children uh, between the ages of three all the way to adulthood. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. where, where is the children's home? It is located in Muranga. Mm -hmm. Yes, Muranga mm -hmm. County. Uh, I'm not from Muranga, but that's where we found ample um, space. Mm -hmm. So we bought land there and we built the home there. We actually moved from Juja. Uh, yes. So okay. We moved there. Oh, what's the name of the children's home? It's called Upendo Kids Village. Ah. There's another home near there it, that is called Upendo, Upendo Children's Home. We are all children's homes, mm -hmm. but we call ourselves Upendo Kids Village. Oh. So that's the name we go by. Mm -hmm. So if you come to our gate, you'll find Upendo Kids Village. It's mm -hmm. a village that I had a vision of because when I was doing my bachelor's degree in the U.S. in human development, I actually wrote a project for one of my classes. Mm -hmm. So we needed to write a community project and that's what I wrote. So it is actually a village because 
we farm there, we have animals there, mm -hmm. and so we are kind of like almost self-sufficient. That's where we are going to, although the rains were not very good this year. Mm -hmm. But we are, we are really a village. You wow. should visit. Wow, um, visit. I, I, I will <laughs> very soon. Yes. I'm going to visit the place. Yes, yes. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And our viewers, now you have an idea who I am hosting. And so tonight we want to talk about conflict in marriage. And as we go to talk about this topic, if you have not gotten this book, Couples Will, written by Dr. Love himself, Willie Kinyash, you are doing yourself injustice. Because when you get this book, you are investing in your marriage. There are quite a number of issues that have been tackled through this book. And so kindly, you can get in touch with me and get your copy, 0723. 214047. If you call that number, and I know it is running down there on your screen, you can call that number and I'll be able to organize how you can get your own copy. A copy is going for 1,000 Kenya shillings only. And those who are watching us from diaspora and friends of Eunice from USA, I can plan. She can come with them as she comes back home. Yes, I will, I will plan. I'll plan that. So kindly get in touch with me and you'll be able to get yourself a copy of this book, Couples Will. So, um, Daktari, yes. we want to talk about conflict in marriage. And maybe we need to start by defining what is conflict in marriage. Um, so I'm going to use very simple you because <laughs> I know that it's not everybody that is in our level. Mm -hmm. Even though I teach college, I told you I'm a professor, I yeah. teach psychology. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to, I would really say that conflict is disagreement. Disagreement. Disagreement that persists mm -hmm. in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, when people cannot agree, they have conflict. Mm -hmm. And conflict is, 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 is not that we, can, uh, we cannot avoid conflict. Conflict is part of us. Mm -hmm. It is very important to have conflict, and I'm going to tell you why. Mm -hmm. The only danger is when conflict arises to where it is causing people to, you know, hit each other. People are not talking. People need to talk about conflict. So it is okay to have conflict. It is okay to have conflict. <laughs> we will talk a little bit about conflict resolution strategies yeah. mm -hmm. because that is what is important for couples. Mm -hmm. We, when we are solving conflict, mm -hmm. we are also teaching other people, like our children, mm -hmm. how to solve conflict. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so what causes this conflict? Sometimes it is just because people are having misunderstandings. It just starts from misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I might do something, whether it is something that I do or I say, that you actually interpret to be you know, to maybe to be something that is hurtful, mm -hmm. even though when even though I did not mean it. Mm -hmm. It can also it can be intentional, it can be unintentional. But mm -hmm. when it is unintentional, people need to talk about it. Even when it is when it is intentional. Mm -hmm. If I if if you think that I said something that is hurting you, you should communicate. Mm -hmm. Conflict starts uh, con conflict resolution starts from communication. Mm -hmm. You cannot solve conflict any other way. Mm -hmm you have to communicate. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your expectations are not met mm -hmm. and you know conflict arises. Mm -hmm. My expectations are my, my expectations are not met by my spouse, conflict arises. But maybe these expectations that I have over my husband mm -hmm. or he has over me mm -hmm. are not communicated, mm -hmm. have never been com communicated. Mm -hmm. So that's where we start from. Mm -hmm. So when I talk to couples because I do marriage coaching, mm -hmm. we start from how do you communicate mm. so that you can be able to know where is the conflict coming mm. from? Mm. Yes. So communication is key. It is key. You know, in Kenya, we are in a season of uh, campaigns and uh, uh, election. Yeah. It is coming in the month of August. Yeah. And so maybe these are family, as we are having this conversation, mm -hmm. they are facing conflict mm -hmm. because of the leader this person is supporting. Yes. And so right there, yes. there's a conflict. Yes. How do they deal with such conflict? Sometimes there are many strategies. As <laughs> I say, it, it, is, it, is, um, it is relevant. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever strategy you use, 
it depends on who we are talking about mm. because our personalities can collide a lot mm -hmm. and we can have conflict whether we have different people that we are we, we are supporting in in politics or not people can still can still be having a smooth relationship a smooth communication even when they are supporting different people mm -hmm. you can be supporting uhuru mm -hmm. i mean or raila and i can be supporting bruto and yeah. we still be agreeing because that's whom you choose mm -hmm. the problem is how do you communicate about your differences mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah. because the difference is what now is bring, gonna bring conflict mm -hmm. it is not the person you choose mm -hmm. it is not the pers person i choose mm -hmm. and i want to say to our viewers mm -hmm. we should never allow politics especially politics to be the reason why our marriage is not thriving mm -hmm. you know why because politics is gonna win you. Yeah. You can have if you if you are supporting Ruto today, and I'm supporting Raila, mm. with whoever wins, mm. most likely is not going to put food on our table. Yeah, true. Most likely it will not uh, pay our children's school fees. Mm -hmm. Most likely they will never be in my, in, our, in our house to solve any problems. Mm -hmm. So I would say, put your con. Put your conf political conflict aside. Mm -hmm. Do not allow that to be the reason why you're fighting. Do not allow that to be the reason why you're, you're actually, your marriage is not doing well. Mm -hmm. So anything that actually does not involve you personally, should, you should really avoid talking about it. What I do with the people that don't agree with my polit political views, mm -hmm. I usually tell them this is not a political meeting. Mm -hmm. We are going to talk about the things that are important to us mm -hmm. and we will not talk about politics because we might not agree. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So let's avoid that. Um, I've seen even children right now, there are people that are supporting Wajakoya or Waja, yeah. whoever yes, is Wajakoya. Probably the young people are supporting that. So you'll find that in a home, mm -hmm. you have three people that are actually mm -hmm. fighting for yes. attention. Mm -hmm. Those three people, mm -hmm are irrelevant in that relationship mm -hmm. yes let me ask should yeah. uh should we use wisdom whereby maybe you find like uh for example yeah the, the man is against mm -hmm. the wife supporting a certain uh political leader yeah uh, can we use wisdom and uh, maybe we say yeah. if if Mze want me to support yeah. Ruto, uh -huh. though I know I am not supporting him, yeah. I'm going to tell I am supporting him. Yeah, because you know by the end of the day, your vote <laughs> You'll is go a, alone. Your vote is a secret. Yes. You, you, that is your secret weapon. <laughs> you use it to uh to let to make the person you think will be valuable mm -hmm. in your in the leadership that you expect, mm -hmm. you vote for them. You don't have to tell your spouse who whom you voted for. Mm -hmm. And you, in fact, if it's that the reason why he's beating me, I'm gonna say yes, sir. I will support your you are, person. But yeah. when I wear, I go to the ballot box, mm -hmm. I vote for the person that I think has the values. Mm -hmm. is, their manifesto is what I support, mm -hmm. not what my husband supports. Mm -hmm. Because we will never agree. When it comes to political views, mm -hmm. that is something that many people will never agree. Wow. They will never agree on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. That, that one, just leave it to the, on that day, mm -hmm. come back and continue with your marriage. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. And let's now go. Um, let's 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 get higher. Let's engage a higher gear, and talk about the the key causes of conflict in marriage. Yes, the key causes. Uh, so I talked about communication in the beginning. Mm. Miscommunication, misunderstanding the spouse. Mm. And in most of the times, communication is all about expectations. Mm -hmm. People fight because of unmet expectations. Mm -hmm. So we have to, before we start a marriage, most of the times, because I do pre-counseling, mm -hmm. uh, pre-marital counseling, mm -hmm. we sit down with couples. Mm -hmm. Whether you have organized a marriage or not, whether you have organized a wedding or not, you sit down and everybody have to communicate their, their expectations to each other. Mm -hmm. You know, if A wants, you know, to have two children, you know, as soon as they get married, mm -hmm. and B does not want to have children as soon as they get married, they maybe the woman wants to have a longer honeymoon, mm -hmm. maybe they are going to school and the husband is insisting on having children, that is going to be conflict. Mm -hmm. So we have to have to communicate our expectations. Mm -hmm. And so
so what causes the conf most conflict? It's not even money. Because sometimes we might have money, but you don't even have, know how to communicate to use mm-hmm. that money. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So money is never the root mm-hmm. cause of, and a lot of people say that. It's mm-hmm. never the root cause. Because even people who don't have money, they can love each mm-hmm. other. Yeah. You can communicate and say what you're going to sacrifice, what you're going to buy, what mm-hmm. you're not going to buy. Mm-hmm. So communication is really the key, is the root cause for a lot of marital conflict. Mm-hmm. So when I teach people about communication, we start with conflict resolution strategies. How do you solve conflict? When your need is not met, how do I how do I communicate with you that you do not meet my meet my need? Mm-hmm. For example, um, I'm gonna give a, a very simple example mm-hmm. that make a lot of couples fight. Mm-hmm. It is where the husband leave the, leaves the socks when he comes into the house, uh-huh. or where he keeps the shoes when he comes into the house. Uh-huh. I'm not going to expect, because we got married today, that you will know where I want you to leave your shoes. Uh-huh. This is a communication you start uh-huh. as you start that relationship. Uh-huh. You know, maybe when you are dating, I was, you are visiting, you know, you are visiting your boyfriend's house, and he used to leave his shoes at the door. Uh-huh. It's not going to take one night because you got married for yeah. him to start keeping the shoes where you want. Mm-hmm. So you communicate, communicate, communicate. Mm-hmm. And you look for ways to communicate because not just the words we say, as I say it, even the things we do. Mm-hmm. For example, body language. Mm-hmm. We communicate through body language. Mm-hmm. Some, people, but, but some people's body language can actually make a, another spouse angry. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, when you come into the house, you don't want to talk, you're not saying anything to somebody else that is going to raise conflict. Because mm. why are you not talking to me? Who have you been talking to during the day? I am talking to you and you're walking. You are walking away. Mm-hmm. All I have, me, I, I left work, you know, during the day I'm the wife and I came to the house, I cooked this nice food, it's smelling nice. And then you come, you don't want to eat. You don't even tell me why you're not eating. Mm-hmm. That is going to make people fight. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So I, I would really encourage people to have tools for communication. You know, even the way you're communicating when you're dating, don't stop communicating that way. Mm -hmm. Whether you have children or not, if you're calling each other babe, continue calling each other babe because Mm -hmm. that is how you are married, that's how your marriage is going to work better. Mm -hmm. Because the love that you had, you should not stop loving each other. Mm -hmm. If you're kissing each other when you are, you know, when you were kissing each other before, you continue kissing, continue each, kissing other. each other. Even after you get children. Mm-hmm. So you are, you have to meet my needs and I meet your needs. Mm-hmm. And once you do that as couples, I will tell you that 99% of the conflict will be solved. Mm-hmm. So I said, look at your verbal communication. How mm-hmm. are you communicating to each other? Mm-hmm. Sometimes people just communicate, you know, uh, contempt. Mm-hmm. You know, I... You know, I am not going to talk to you. You're not going to talk to me. I, you know, I'm already telling you I don't like you. I don't even want to leave you in this house, with mm-hmm. you in this house. But I'm not saying anything. Mm-hmm. Just the way I'm acting. Mm-hmm. Just the way I'm sh- showing my facial expressions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and a lot of times men don't talk a lot. Mm-hmm. And women like to talk because yeah. we are social beings. Mm-hmm. So if a man comes in the house and they don't talk, mm-hmm. they, we need to educate them how to talk to each other. Because they're social being if they're not talked to, they will take that as you don't even love me anymore. Mm-hmm. You don't care about me. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. And I hope it does. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, it does. Yes. Let's talk about our upbringing. Maybe there is some behaviors yeah. that we have, yeah. but they are as a result of how we were brought up. Can this bring conflict in marriage? Yes, uh, I know that off the show, or off the air, we had talked a little bit about mm-hmm. childhood mm-hmm. trauma, which mm-hmm. I'm very, very passionate about. Mm-hmm. From the psychology point of view, and the things I have studied and about the brain, that our upbringing, sometimes it, we, it, it, it brings trauma to us as children, mm-hmm. and we grow with that trauma. So as we are growing up with that trauma and we are not getting intervention, we are not dealing with that trauma, whether it is through counseling or therapy, you find out that when you get married, you will carry that trauma into your marriage. And what trauma does, you know, those people that have done research, what trauma does to the brain is that there are so many wrong things that happen in the brain. One of them is the stress levels that are usually very, very high. People that are very stressed, 
they cannot communicate because of anger. They have anger issues and they have a lot of anxiety. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody who is anxious? Have you ever tried to talk to somebody who is angry and sad, you know, and somebody who is always feeling fatigued because of the trauma? This, those are some of the upbringing, like if you had abuse, if your parents were abusing you. So you will find out that a lot of people are not thriving in the marriage because you, they have that, there's something that you call trauma bond. Mm -hmm. So you were traumatized, I was traumatized, and we bond on that, uh, at that level. Mm -hmm. And none of us is talking about it, none of us is seeking help. Then we are going to have a lot of issues. As I also say that parenting a child is going to determine how that child is going to be as an adult. So whenever we are parenting, even as a couple, we have to know that everything that we do to that child is going to mold that child to how they, they grow up. If you don't love your wife, do not expect your sons and daughters to love their spouses mm -hmm. because they are watching you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we know from, you know, psychology or even de human development, mm -hmm. you know, the brain, you know, a child comes into this world as, a, as, a, as an empty slate. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've heard that term, mm -hmm. uh, an empty slate. You're writing down how mm -hmm. they are going to behave when they grow up as an adult. Mm -hmm. So they are watching you hit your wife. The, that child is going to be hitting other kids in school, mm -hmm. and so that I am shaping this shaping, boy, this girl from yes. that tender age. Yes, mm -hmm. if you don't respect women, because there, we know that there are some spouses that don't respect their women, yeah. or the other way around, that child that is in that home and we are the same gender mm -hmm. is going to know that you don't respect that other gender, mm -hmm. and that's how it's gonna be even when they got they get married. Um, I talk a lot about um, uh, physical punishment, which we call spanking mm -hmm. or kiboko, that's yeah. you know, beating children. Mm -hmm. Sometimes parents have been socialized to think that, you know, you have to beat your child to discipline them, and that is not the only way. Mm -hmm. um, again, let's go back to conflict. Mm -hmm. you, you fight your child because there's a conflict. Mm -hmm. They did not do what you expected them to do. They did mm -hmm. not meet your expectations as a parent. Yeah. So you fight that child to communicate that I will solve this conflict by beating you. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So you're socializing that child to always solve conflict through physical violence. Yeah. So even when they grow up, they will become, they are the children that are, I mean, they will be the husbands or the, the wives that mm. beat their, their spouse yeah. to solve conflict. Mm -hmm. So maybe as parents, we engage in other ways, in other strategies of uh, disciplining a child, which there are many, you know, like, you know, taking away privileges and mm -hmm. things like that, you know, sitting a child in a corner, you know, redirect, they, redirecting them. Communicating again, communication is also very key when it comes to, to bringing up a child. Mm -hmm. So communicate with that child about what the society expects, what you expect as a parent, mm -hmm. what is the best behavior, rather than always, you know, resorting to beating. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that you don't traumatize your child. Yes. Uh, uh, let's stick there a yes. little bit, eh? Yes. And uh, because there's something you told me that mm -hmm. when when the baby yeah. is in the womb. Yes. There are some things who speak, mm -hmm. and this, this, this girl, this boy, yeah. when he or she is growing up, yeah. there are some things, or they, there's a way you start behaving, mm -hmm. but it is started all the way. All the way from conception. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a, a woman that is going through a lot of stress, who is carrying a baby, that baby is going to have a lot of stress. There's something that you call cortisol. Cortisol is what is the correct secreted through your, your saliva and it is a part of the brain that actually releases that cortisol and that part of the brain god created it to fight stress mm -hmm. okay so as a mom you're going through a lot of stress and you're excreting that a lot of cortisol cortisol is known to be very poisonous mm -hmm. it actually gets into some of the organs like your heart um it is some of the reasons why people have even cancer you be surprised, high blood pressure. So you are transmitting that to a little child. You mm -hmm. are causing a lot of anxiety to that child. If that child were to be born today and their, 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 their saliva sample is taken, their cortisol level would be the same as the parent. Oh no. So the brain has already 
being uh, has already been sensitized, stimulated to start producing that cortisol. So there is an allowable level of cortisol, but when it goes beyond the limit, it, start, it, it becomes poisonous. So it impacts your whole mechanism, your body. So that child is going to be growing, is going to grow up with a lot of anxiety, is going to be traumatized again. Trauma mm. is transmitted through that way. Mm. So even that child, their body will always be ready to fight trauma. And then after you bring up that child, then they, the baby is growing, especially when they are infant, you know, they don't communicate. Mm. So you have a child that is crying, and maybe they are crying because their stress levels are very high. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. And then you add on to that stress if you are not giving that love to the child that if they need it. If you're, if you're a mom that is not being loved by, the, by your spouse, there is also something else. We, we call it spillover effect. So spillover, mm -hmm. spillover effect is you are, you're not being loved by your husband. So when you go to love your child, you have no love to give mm -hmm. because you are unloved. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. So you are not going to love your children the way you are supposed to love. So an infant child is going to be stressed because you will not be able to meet their needs. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, if you are living in a home where there's domestic violence as a woman, you're being beaten throughout the night and you have a little baby, you, won't, you don't even have the energy to lift that baby up. Mm -hmm. Maybe your body is hurting, maybe you are, you are also stressed. So when that child cries, you, maybe because of your own stress and your trauma from the beating, you can't pay attention to that child. So you will not meet their needs. Mm. So that child is not going to trust adults. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. So there is mistrust. Mm -hmm. So there is, you can trust um, a parent or you can mistrust them. So the opposite of trust. So when the baby cries because their diaper is wet, there's nobody to change because this mom has no does not have the warmth to provide to the baby that is growing mm -hmm. or the baby who needs to be fed and you as a woman who is supposed to be breastfeeding because of the stress level in your body you are probably not even providing the child with enough milk mm -hmm. does that make sense yeah. so we have this cycle of trauma that is going round you know in the in this family system mm -hmm. and so when the child is growing up because of that trauma, because of being unloved, is going to be probably finding love elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So when, especially daughters, that is actually proven by research. Mm -hmm. If you are a has, if you are a dad that does not love their daughters, mm -hmm. as soon as that daughter hits the the door, mm -hmm. they will be looking for love from men from, out there from the wrong people because mm. they did not get it from their dad mm. so it is also very very important as a couple mm. if you have daughters to make sure that they have a connection with their father mm. because as soon as they get out there they'll be looking for a male person or a, you Good know a human, love. another love yeah another love that they never got from their dad mm. so again that's why you're finding young young people young girls are just wasting them, themselves outside because anybody that shows them a little bit of love or something that looks like love, mm. they fall for it. Mm. And again, you know, the opposite is for boys, they they, they turn to drug, yeah. alcoholism, mm. Mm. and then we are here as a society judging them mm. that, you know, so-and-so son is just doing drugs, mm. but we don't know the that cause. the root cause mm. is actually in the home. Mm. So this child never got love, never got warm. Mm. And, you know, their brain is telling them, you know, there's nobody to trust in the world. Why would you then go trust in other people? So you get to some other I can't other trust my own parents. Yes. Who else can I trust? Who else can I trust? Uh. So then you go out there and you find, you know, young people committing suicide. Just about two weeks ago, I think we lost two students from Jomo Kenyatta University. Mm -hmm. One of them died because they could not pass exams. They did not graduate. They committed suicide. Mm -hmm. So again... I, 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 I am this child that my father doesn't love or is going to perhaps even almost kill me because I have wasted his school fees. I don't trust my father enough, mm -hmm. so I'm going to end my, my life before I get, before my, my father kill me. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the cycle is, 
is, is something that we need to cut. Even mm. as we talk about these things, and I hope that your viewers or our viewers are listening. Yes. There's mm. so much to talk about, but mm. this is all about parenting, mm -hmm. child development, how mm. the psychology works. Mm. Yes. Now, yes. Mm -hmm. Wenja, mm -hmm. then how do we solve conflict between husband and wife? So the first thing is go back to your first love. Go back to your first love. Go first, go back to your first love. It's also you know it's a baby course, yeah. you know, saying. Yeah. Um, because before you get married, I'm sure you started somewhere. Mm. You you started from a place of love. Mm. So find that thing that connected you together. Find that thing that made you think that you can live together because I am sure there's always something that connects you. Mm. Whether it is going for um, an outing together, whether mm. it is, you know, just having a quiet time together, whether it's just going down the river or walking down the streets, mm. you know, find something that connects you. And of course, you, I am hoping that the people that are listening, maybe they want to base their love on the love of God, mm. because we alone as human beings, we short, we are, we fall short of, of glory. Of glory. Mm. So we need to actually tap into that love of God that is unconditional, yeah. because we don't want to stop loving our spouses because you know they have grown fat after giving birth, mm -hmm. you know they have lost shape because they have carried our babies, or yeah. they have, you know they are growing older. We are all gonna grow older. This unconditional love that is based on the word of God is very, very important. It will help us solve a lot of problems because once you love each other, you will be able to listen to the other person. Mm -hmm. So that communication where I hear you, you know, um, we usually say like when we are talking about something, instead of telling you, uh, you left that cup, you know, you know, I'm mad because you did not put your shoes there. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you can start from a way of, you know, like a conversation like, you know, I, I feel I feel like you, you know, I feel disrespected when you leave your shoes out there. So I am not, you know, I'm not pointing at you. At the same time, I'm communicating my feelings. Does that make sense? Yeah. All I feel unloved when you don't give me a kiss when you come to the house as a, as a wife. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's, that's my, that is my love language. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a husband say might say, I feel disrespected mm -hmm. when every time when I come in the in the in the you know in the house, you're just talking to your sister on the phone for two hours. Mm -hmm. I go to bed. I'm commuting communicating my feelings, but at the same time, I'm telling you, you talking to me it is important. Mm -hmm. Us talking to each other is important. Mm -hmm. So we have to find a language that connects us and make us you hear me and I hear you. Mm -hmm. So I am telling you my expectations and you're telling me. Our ex your expectations. And then we have to, sometimes that it means you write, you write them down. If you, every time you're fighting over a cup, mm -hmm. you know, I, I want to write down and tell you how I would like that cup to look like. And then I'll tell you, you know, Mama Nyabura or, you know, Mama John, when you serve me tea, please give me that cup. It makes me feel loved. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, before I end, I wanted to say that, you know, I am very passionate about things like domestic violence because I came from a point of, you know, me feeling that domestic violence affecting me as a child. And every time I talk to people, I usually say, don't be the reason why a child does never want to get married because you are beating their mother or you are beating their father because even men are beaten. Mm, so, yeah, yeah. you know, I remember the time when, when, when I thought that my father was beating my mom because he never found, you know, warm food at home. So as I was growing up as a child, I started warming his food, but that didn't stop the fight. You know, so I, I, I knew that there was a, something that was going on, but I didn't. But now because I am in family mm -hmm. and human development and psychology, I can now say, I don't know if my mom never met my dad's expectations. Maybe maybe she didn't know what expectations that he had, mm -hmm. but maybe if they were communicated, she would have known. So maybe the dom there wouldn't have been domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what, what happens to yes. a couple? Yes. Uh, maybe there is one person mm -hmm. who is who yeah. is open, yeah. but the other one is not open. He, he or she is just there. Yeah. So I want us to come and have a conversation, mm -hmm. but the other 
person is not ready yeah. for that conversation. Yeah, you you have to you have to meet each other somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. Like have a have a place where you can you can both feel like you your needs are met. Because if a man if, if a man feels like his needs are met when he keeps quiet, those are his needs. Mm -hmm. So you cannot force him to talk. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Again, as I said, if I know that you don't like to talk, I will find a way of making sure that I communicate with you and you understand me and I understand you. Men, a lot of men don't like talking. Mm -hmm. Even my own husband, sometimes yeah. he does not <laughs> like talking. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we talk to men when they are engaged in something else. That's something else that I wanted to say. As a psychology professor, what I know about a, a man's brain is not wired the same way a woman's brain is. If a man is reading so a newspaper, yes, they should. <laughs> yes. We should understand men. Mm -hmm. So when a man is reading a newspaper, that is all what he can do mm -hmm. at that mo moment. Yeah. He does not know how to multitask. Yes. A woman is breastfeeding at the same time cooking, cooking. at the same time talking on the phone, at yeah. the same time looking at the little ones that are going around, at the yeah. same time thinking mm -hmm. about cows that are being milk milked outside. Women can do all that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need to find out when this man is not reading the newspaper mm -hmm. or scrolling through the, the phone to talk to them. Mm -hmm. So we have, to, we have to know that men are not wired the same way we are wired. Women like to talk. And men do not like to talk a lot. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know how to, if, you, if a man doesn't know how to talk or communicate about those things, because sometimes I feel intimidated, because mm -hmm. women, can you, I mean, just looking at this show, how many words am I saying mm. in a minute? <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. saying a lot of words. Yeah. So that's the same thing that happens in a home. Mm -hmm. So when a woman talks so much, the men are going to start feeling intimidated intimidated then they'll start saying it's a lecture mm -hmm. why are you lecturing me mm -hmm. but i'm saying all the words that i'm supposed to say according to how god created me mm -hmm. and then the man is only speaking a few words and then yeah. i'm gonna say why are you not talking to me you know <laughs> he said i <laughs> don't want to talk about it now yes and right there there's a conflict yes right there's a there's a conflict if yeah. you find yourselves fighting because you don't know how to communicate it's very important that you also engage a therapist or even a counselor who can teach you how to communicate. Mm. Because as I said, there are many, many ways of, you know, you know, um, you know, uh, killing a cat. No, mm. we are not killing any cats on this show. Yeah. But there are many, many ways of helping um, navigating that, you know, that conflict mm. without me saying so many words. As, and as I say, as I say it, uh, maybe men just, you know, just keeping quiet, he's telling you that he's angry. Mm. It's it's my duty as a woman to find out why he's angry. Whether I'm going to call him baby, whether I'm going to call him sweetie. Mm. You know, sometimes it's not just Baba Wangare. You just mm. call him the the name that you called him when, you know. You are dating. Yeah, when you're dating. Mm. And then maybe he's going to open up and tell you what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Would you advise yeah. someone? Yeah. Maybe for... Mm -hmm. This, this person who is not ready to open up and have a conversation. Yeah. Would you advise someone to write in a text and explain herself? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you have also to be very careful with mm -hmm. social media. Text messages can also be, you know, sometimes I've seen couples fight because somebody was texting and then there was autocorrect. And the yeah. word that was supposed to say and said us, which is really, you know, very <laughs> different. So yes. sometimes you have to be very, very uh, careful when we communicate through text, even email. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of communication barriers that happen through the technology. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you might mean well, but when those words come to me, even when they are correct in grammar and, you know, spelling, mm -hmm. I still interpret them wrong. Mm -hmm. So it is okay to write, but if you write to me all the time, then I'm going to worry about why are you writing to me? And maybe when we were dating, that's not how we used to communicate. Mm -hmm. You know, how did you ask me for the first date? Use those words, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, as I said, I mean, w reading a book, and I'm sure you have maybe some advice on mm -hmm. how to communicate. Just look for a way that makes people communicate. Communication is it's very different. Some people communicate by just an action. Mm -hmm. You know, me, I know my husband loves me when he's sweating, helping me mop the floor. Like in the US, we don't have house girls. Mm -hmm. When I find my husband in the kitchen cooking, to me, that is love language. That's mm -hmm. how I he's communicating to me that I care. Mm -hmm. So find that love language that connects you. If maybe your husband is 
angry and there's a way you maybe he appreciates something like chocolate my husband likes chocolate a lot by the way valentine's he buys me chocolate but he ends up eating them because <laughs> that's what he you know he yeah. that is love language so mm -hmm. i buy chocolate for him mm -hmm. so as again i said communication is not just words mm -hmm. it's also the non-verbal mm -hmm. communication that we don't see and that is what really actually kill marriages it's not the words that we say it's what the words that we do not say mm. so when somebody when you're not talking to each other i don't want to be in a house where nobody's talking to me mm. so i'll find a way of making you talk mm -hmm. whether i'm going to use children and you'll be surprised that actually uh some of the 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 researched methods of of communication are actually through a triangle mm -hmm. so uh, I don't know if you imagine a triangle. Yeah. So where you have three people, mm -hmm. sometimes that can also be uh, a way of um, a, a way of de-escalating. So, for example, people like that like to shout at each other when they are in conflict. It's also advisable, actually, that they can use a third party to communicate. Mm -hmm. So long as that that party is not making things worse. So mm -hmm. we, we we call it de-escalation. Mm -hmm. So if I am not communicating with you, and you find this a lot, especially with uh, blended families mm -hmm. or maybe people that have separated but they are still cooperating, mm -hmm. co-parenting, mm -hmm. they can communicate through the children because them themselves, you know, when every time they start to communicate, it's so heated. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can send your child and say, Go tell daddy to come drink tea because I know if I go there, maybe him just looking at me, I'm going to trigger something probably that is going to make him more angry. So you can, you are actually allowed to use that triangle. It's called triangulation. Mm -hmm. I know people, uh, triang triangulation can also be negative, but it is actually a good therapy strategy te or technique. Wow. Yes. Wow. That our time is up. <laughs> our time is up. Um, oh, I know one hour or oh, 30 minutes are gone. Yeah. I know. And I said I said most of the words. I know wow. you did not talk a lot. Thank you so much. You're Thank welcome. You so much for coming. You're welcome. Can you can give us your final remarks. So to the listener, um, you know, marriage is not a bed of roses. And I am not, I'm I'm not in my 25th almost year in marriage because I'm a perfect person. Uh, I have gone to a lot of marriage counseling. I like when people are giving those type of seminars because I take my husband with us. So I don't have to be the one who is saying the things that he should be doing. Mm -hmm. So that helps. Uh, but I want to say that, as I said, if you are struggling in communication, please try some of the methods that we talked today. Of course, read Willie's book, and I'm sure that you know it has very, very good advice. And of course, uh, pray. Because, you know, God is the author of marriage. Um, and I know that he works day and night to make, that, to make sure that marriages work. So your marriage will work if you base it on that love of God. Wow. Yes. Amen. Thank yes. you so much. <laughs> and congratulations. Thank you. You are graduating today. Yes. At Kenyatta University. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Yes, Congrats. I am. I'm, I'm, I got my PhD today. Wow. And I'm very, very happy. Yes. Yes, to God. I thank God for that. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Maybe before you go back to US, mm -hmm. you need to come back and we talk about child trauma. That's okay. I'll look for you. That's okay. Yes. That's okay. Thank you so much. Yes. We really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. And that marks to the end of our tonight show. What is your take home? Kindly leave a comment down there on the comment section so that we can be able to know what you have learned is beautiful nice so thank you so much for joining us and you have not if you have not yet gotten yourself a copy of my book kindly call the number down there and you'll be able to get yourself a copy it has only five chapters chapter one talks about the purpose of marriage chapter two talks about what makes marriage a marriage chapter three talks about how to build strong marriages Chapter four talks about submission in marriage. And the last chapter talks about personal space in marriage. So call that number and you'll be able to receive your copy. A copy is going for 1,000 Kenya shillings. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Willie Kinyash underscore couples will. I'm also on TikTok, couples will show. You can find me 
huko kwote and you'll be able you'll be able to interact more there how how can people get in touch with you i am on facebook so my name's are yunis menja e u n i c e and i'm sure you're going to put to put it somewhere else some, yes. somewhere there yeah. and my last name menja m e n j a make sure that you follow me uh, i have parentheses or brackets up- upendo kids beside my name so you can follow me um i don't know which number to give because i have so many numbers but my kenyan number is 0715780586 wow. yes i'm also on tiktok as coach menja actually uh-huh. i call myself coach menja wow yeah thank you yes thank you so much so thank you so much for joining us my name is willy kinyash i'm a doctor love na ukipenda the undisputed and i was hosting dr yunis menja this is wema tv the voice of hope and of course the show is couples with this is where we write down our love with but we don't want our love story to be read when we are gone so kwa heri ya kuna na see you on friday good night and god bless you and god bless you man